You can all fuck off and die. Oh, this is not my intro. Wait. Okay, found it. Hey there, my name's Unique Namasaurus, and welcome to my first top 10 list. Before you leave, let me just advertise the experience you're getting into. You can expect 50% criticizing my opinion and 50% questioning whether I'm sane or not. But I'm not sane, I can do top 10 list too. I'ma stick a little disclaimer in before we start. First off, only one character per franchise. Shit's gonna get really old otherwise. Secondly, an antagonist is not the same as a villain. This is not a contest of who can be the most evil. However, if it was, I would win easily because I have clips from Elf and Lied in video editing software. Kick the dog. Shit, someone made fun of a dog dying that wasn't even real. Oh no! Thirdly, just like every other top 10 list you've seen, I need to insist that this is just my opinion and everyone is entitled to their own personal subjective view on what's best. <laughs> ah, I can't do this. This is a top 10 list, and whether you like it or not, I don't believe everything in storytelling is so subjective that everything is just as good as everything else because it's all about the eye of the beholder. Of course, if you personally define the word good as what you personally like, then I guess it's completely subjective. In which case, for this video, heck my whole channel, I'ma define good as the elements of storytelling that are engaging to any unbiased human brain. Of course, there are always slight variations from person to person on what's good, even with this definition. Some people are going to like certain elements more than others, but I don't think anyone is arguing that a shallow character is better than a deep one, and I doubt you're ever going to run into someone who hates something like character development. The uh, what? It's like, ring ring, the loony bin called, they want that- oh, never mind, it's about me again. Me and Mr. Fuzzy Nipples just want to live in peace, so leave us alone! Point is, I don't like playing this everybody wins game where we're not allowed to disagree with others or put forward concrete views on what is good and what is bad. This is literally a list of antagonists that I think make their stories better as wholes. Does that sound presumptuous? Damn right it does, but I'm here for the love of the medium and how it works. Making these bold statements about what's good and what's not opens up some amazing discussion that I treasure being a part of. Here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna shout my opinion at you and use evidence and logic to justify why I think I'm right. If you disagree, I either didn't justify my points well enough or I'm just plain wrong. Which, believe me, I'll admit to if it happens. As I say, I'm here for the love of the medium and learning what works and what doesn't is more important to me than being right. Hell, check out my last SAO video for a good example of that. I was all like, this is bad, and a lot of people were like, what the fuck? And I was all like, a lot of people disagree. Maybe I'm the one who's biased? And then I took into account some other factors and I was like, oh shit, whoops, I was wrong. And everyone was like, I'm glad you came around to our side, unique Namasaurus. You are forgiven, you fucking slut. No one, no one actually called me a slut. I just like insulting myself. I have no idea why, though. On a side note, I have the weirdest boner right now. Anyway, let's get things back on track. Welcome to the party, people. The entertainment's up top, the discussion's down below, and if you're looking for the punch, it's in the argument. Whether we're right or wrong, let's embrace it all. Here comes number 10. Number 10, Johann Liebert. Wait, your name is spelled with a J? <laughs> That's dumb. The German language is dumb. Oh wait, we English speakers spell phonetic, the word for pronunciation, with a fucking PH. So here's the thing. Johann Liebert is the main antagonist from a relatively dated anime called Monster. Among the veteran anime community, he's most likely to be regarded as the greatest anime antagonist of all time. Yeah. As you can tell, I enjoy putting my back to a cross and stabbing nails into my hands. Before I get to why he's number 10 instead of number 1, let's talk about why he's on the list at all. To Johan's credit, Johan's credit, he has amazing superficial features. And I don't mean superficial in a bad way. His outward personality is probably the creepiest and most sinister you will see on this list. He has a completely calm and innocent demeanor which contrasts everything evil he says and does. If you're familiar with the concept of the Uncanny Valley, then you'll know this guy hits that nail on the head. To add more to the chaotic brew, Johan, oh fuck this, and spelling it with a Y. As I was saying, to add to everything, Johan is intimidating. His manipulative nature and his presence in the plot make him an antagonist that's so significant, powerful, and dominating that he's almost terrifying. The issue with Johan, however, is his depth. Throughout the entirety of Monster, Johan's reasoning, his psychology, his motives, his plans, and just what he was thinking is really unclear and convoluted. For instance, his ultimate goal is never really made clear between kill everyone or something and something else called the ultimate suicide. Even then, though, he makes a lot of actions which straight up contradict his supposed end goal. You can't have your cake and eat it, Johan. Actually, no, you totally could. Who the fuck popularizes these fucking expressions? Stop sucking sliced bread's dick, it's not even that great! There are a lot of instances where I think I could have appreciated his character and because of that the plot as a whole if I just understood at the very least the basics of his character. For the record, a lot of the stuff with his backstory makes sense and I understand what made him the character he is in the present, but the actions he makes as he moves around the plot tend to be very weird and confusing. A lot of the time I just wasn't clear on what he was doing or why. 
It's like, why are you here? Why are you there? Why are you surrounded by children? Why are you suddenly crying now? If you wanted, you could argue it as mystery, but there's no payoff to any of it, and in the end, I just give up on Monster's mystery being effective. I wish I could give some more specific examples, but I watched Monster half a year ago when I started playing this list, so my memory on specifics is a little foggy. I mean, I could watch it again, but that's like 70 episodes, so it'll probably take so long I'll forget stuff about other contenders on this list. But if you're still in doubt, go watch Monster again. I don't think it's hard to spot the problems with him. He's fantastically creepy and foreboding, but I'll be damned if I really understand the guy. I would say we're about to move on to number 9, but we're actually gonna go to number 8 and come back to 9 later. Seems weird, I know, but it's gonna make it easier for me to explain my reasoning, so just trust me on this. Okay, number 8 is so- <laughs> I love this guy so much. I don't even know where to begin with this. Number 8 is Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter, the 2011 one, not the old one. I haven't watched that. Similar to Johan, Ahsoka is an antagonist with fantastic superficial features. He's easily the quirkiest and funniest antagonist on this list, and that's his selling point. I should probably add here that I think the superficial features of these characters are what tend to make them fan favorites, so if anyone is wondering why the two most popular antagonists are so high up, it's because the other antagonists service their show a lot more. These guys here don't add as much to the experience as a whole, but by god are they fun to watch as standalone characters. Ahsoka has entertainment in spades. No, like actually because he uses cards. Boy. Let me bash out the numbers on what gives Hisoka good superficial features. He's charming, he's funny, he's unique, and he's a pedophile. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, he's a pedophile, and it's played out as a constant joke and something unique about his character through the series, and I fucking love it! This guy is so weird and creepy that it makes him so goddamn hilarious, it's fantastic! See, now, unlike Johan, there's nothing confusing about Hisoka's character. There isn't all that much explained about Hisoka, and so his character isn't all that deep. But what he's explained is enough to be able to appreciate his character and understand his actions. Hisoka is simply one of those chaotic evil thrill seekers and that's all he needs to function. And again, maybe he's close to chaotic neutral. Interestingly, there's one arc where Hisoka fights alongside the main characters, so then question. Does that make him no longer an antagonist? Here's my answer. Uh, that's my answer. A lot of this countdown will have a lot of grey area and that's one of the points we'll find in. It's really hard to debate. We could say that he's simply not an antagonist for that arc, but that just seems weird because he's still the same character. It's not like the character logic has changed. I don't even... I, I don't know. Even that sounds weird. Anyway, I'm just going to keep it simple and call him an antagonist through and through because he spends more time hindering the protagonist than helping him. Also, there's one other thing that makes Hisoka stand out. Hisoka has an element that I've never seen on another villain and I've only ever seen once in another antagonist, who coincidentally is coming up next. That element is what I call humanizing, and it's basically consistent of characters disregarding the tense plot scenario and just being how they would be as a normal human being. Laughing, playing, and joking around are all great ways to achieve that. All the time do you see Hisoka breaking away from business to have a normal conversation or joke about something and it adds so much more feeling to his character. Unlike so many other antagonists, Hisoka feels much more alive and real. Granted, most of the human side is shown in the Greed Island arc, the arc where he works partially by the protagonist's sides. Humanizing is something that's almost essential with protagonists, but no one does it with antagonists, and it's a shame because no matter what, all characters can profit from more feeling. And yes, I did use the word feeling to describe Hisoka. Baba, get your mind out of the gutter. There's only room for one of us. Okay, now just before we move on, let me help out those of you who don't understand my point. Look, I can summarize Hisoka in a single word. Shoring? Cool, who's chosen? Alright, I've had my say. Comment section's all yours, guys. Hope you're ready for number seven, though. Actually, tell you what, if someone guesses number seven before I release the video, I'll reply to you and tell you you're right. The reason I say this, though, is because the next character is so ridiculously far out of left field that I know no one is gonna get it. Hey, I'll even give you a clue. The antagonist is easily the youngest on the list and is also the most innocent. Question, is getting you to guess the next antagonist a ploy to increase comment participation, thereby increasing the popularity of the video? My answer, Ah. Uh... God, why do I interrogate myself like this? Look, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think of that while scripting this, but it's close to, hey, that's an added bonus, rather than that being the sole reason for its creation. That's, uh, it's not really much better, but hey, at least I'm honest about it. What can I say? I like the idea of the channel growing, so I'm gonna do what marketing I can. In return, though, I promise to always level with you guys and be honest about everything. <laughs> uh, it's ironic, because being honest with your consumer is actually a PR technique, so my honesty is actually still dishonest. Oh yeah, while we're on the topic of marketing, if you honestly like the video, remember to like. A lot of people move on without doing anything, but if I can get everyone who passes through here to do something, like, the difference would be hilariously enormous. I really want to see that. I mean, I'm the creator, so obviously, but hey, you get the satisfaction out of it too. You get the immense satisfaction of making someone's day through a pure act of kindness. It will satisfy your body and soul. <coughs> Too much bullshit. I'll be honest, you don't really get anything for liking the video. It's just a favor if you feel kind enough to do so. But I will appreciate it and be immensely thankful. That's about all I can offer. So yeah, thanks. To number eight. I'll try to get part two out in the next two weeks. 
but I can't promise anything. Until then, though, catch you later.